Hi, I'm Anthony L. Elmore in downtown Memphis on the mighty Mississippi River, bringing you another hot and fiery Black Memphis history lesson. I am Anthony L. Elmore, Memphis' first independent theatrical filmmaker. This video is titled Black Memphis History, WDIA radio station, The Calls of the Black Memphis Cultural Revolution. Let me be clear, the amazing story of WDA should be the subject of a major motion picture. Because of Memphis, white supremacy, racism, and black on black racism, such dynamic black Memphis stories remain untold. You see, myself as a film worker can produce the WDIA story. You see, in 1947, WDIA, Memphis 6th radio station, faced an uphill battle. Like its competitors, it initially featured white male radio personalities playing country and pop hits that catered only to white listeners. However, this approach didn't resonate with the city's diverse population. Roughly, 40% of Memphis residents were black, yet our voices remain absent from the airways. Now, facing bankruptcy in 1948, WDIA's white owners, Burt Ferguson and John R. Pepper, took a bold step. You see, on October the 25th, 1948, they introduced a half hour show called Tan, Tan Town Jubilee hosted by Nat D. Williams, a black Memphis syndicated columnist, high school teacher, and local talent show host. You see, Nat D. Williams played blues records from his own collection. The story is never told. You see, WDIA got bomb threats from whites. See, in spite of the initial bomb threats from whites, in 1948, it was earth-shaking and revolutionary for blacks to have a radio station, and this story should be told. You see, imagine a new blues R&B program in the lineup, Hoot and Holler, open up with Rufus Thomas saying I'm young and loose and full of juice, I got the goose. So what's the use? Within a year, WDIA had entirely converted to African American program and quickly became the number one station and the first to cross a million dollars annually. See, this is the story that should be talked about. See, let me explain how this was a black cultural revolution. You see, white supremacy promotes the fact that white was superior. See, in regards to Memphis culture, it was WDIA that spurred black music dominance in Memphis. You see, in Nashville, white culture dominates with this country and western music. In Memphis, it was WDIA that gave black culture its voice in Memphis. See, for the first time, black people in Memphis had a reflection of our community on the radio. See, WDIA rapidly rose to number, the number two spot in the market. This was like Jackie Robinson breaking the racial barrier in Major League Baseball. This is why the WDI story should be told in a movie. You see, in a white dominated city, the station, WDI playing black music was number one in the white racist Memphis culture. This was liberation. See, thanks to WDI, we blacks could lift our heads and clearly feel empowered. You see, by 1954, WDIA had increased its power 
to 50,000 watts, reaching 10% of America's black population. This is clearly amazing. You see, unknown and untold in Memphis, it was WDIA that helped to create the black culture revolution in Memphis. You see, the, this story is significant and WDIA is equally important as the civil rights movement. You see, in the Mid-South, WDIA created the Black Memphis Cultural Revolution. You see, what most white people call rock and roll today is simply black music. Do not listen to me. Listen to white people in the 1950s, whereas Unknown and untold today, whites hated Elvis because Elvis was singing black music. Let's listen to white people tell this story. You're there is no room in this city for the vulgar performances of Elvis Presley. It's shocking. I watched him gyrate his legs and swivel his hips. And our parent-teachers group feels he should not be on television. Weaver set up a 20-man committee to do away with it, this vulgar, animalistic, nigger, rock and roll bob. Our committee will check with the restaurant owners and the cafes to see what uh, Presley Records is on their machines and then ask them to do away with them. You've learned anything from the criticism level that you? No, I haven't. You haven't, huh? Because uh, I don't, I don't feel that I'm doing anything wrong. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. You cry the time. Rock and roll has got to go. And go it does at KWK. We're all through playing rock and roll records. This week is record-breaking week here at KWK. And after this week, no more rock and roll will be played on the air. The obscenity and vulgarity of the rock and roll music is obviously a means by which the white man and his children can be driven to the level with the nigger. It is obviously nigger music. Let's get the facts straight. Unknown and untold, in 1948, when Elvis Presley moved to Memphis, WDIA played a major role in the life of Elvis Presley, and it is Anthony of Elmore who tells this story. You see, Elvis listened to WD, not only listened to WDIA, he went to all the black clubs to enjoy black music. See, records note that Elvis visited Club Hippodrome on Bill Street in Memphis. You see, on WDIA, there was Dr. Herbert Brewster's East Trig Baptist Church, which aired on WDIA radio. You see, a young Elvis Presley was so influenced, whereas Elvis Presley, a white man, not only listened to Dr. Herbert Brewster, Elvis Presley joined the church and sung in the choir during times of segregation when it was illegal for blacks and whites to do things together. Now, let me explain the Elvis Presley story. You see, Elvis Presley, while living in Tupelo, Mississippi, Elvis loved the black singer, Big Arthur Cooter. You see, Elvis is quoted as saying, quote, down in Tupelo, Mississippi, I used to hear old Arthur Cooter bang his box the way I do now, and I said, if I ever got to the place I could feel all old Arthur felt, I'd be a music man like nobody saw. Unquote. You see, when, w, when the WDIA Good Review reviews happened in 1956 and 1957, you see, the Brown versus Board of Education was passed in 1954. Memphis was still rigidly segregated. See, Emmett Till was killed in Mississippi Delta in August 28, 1955. Now, in June of 1956, 21-year-old Elvis Presley attended the fair in Memphis with black people. You see, segregated, and while Elvis was a big star himself, Elvis was like a little kid attending the good WDIA, good review, 
show seeing the black heroes whom he admired. See, let's look at the facts in history. You see, in November of 1956, Elvis' first movie, Love Me Tender, had premiered. Now, just a month later, 21-year-old Elvis Presley was at the Saturday, December the 7th, 1956, Good Will Review. Let's look at Black Memphis history and WDIA's Good Review on Saturday, December 7th, 1956. We see Elvis Presley with B.B. King. Look at the picture of Elvis with Rufus Thomas and Elvis having a good time. We see that they performed in Native American clothes during this show. Now, we see Elvis here, uh, Elvis backstage. You see, in 2004, Jamie Foxx did the movie Ray about Ray Charles. While he did the movie, we can show you 20 year old Ray Charles in Memphis performing at the WDIA Goodwill Review. He, he, look at this picture. He is with the Queen Martha Jean Steinberg, who started working as a disc jockey in 1954. She was one of the first female disc jockeys in America. This is Black Memphis history. She moved to Charlotte and made a big name for herself. She became a preacher. You see, also on Saturday, December the 7th, 1956, we show with the we show at the WDIA Good Review the Moon Glows. They were very big stars. In the Mid-South, WDIA created the Black Memphis Culture Revolution. You see, let's move to the 1957 WDIA Memphis Fundraiser. You see, the WDIA Good Review was a fundraiser to raise money to do things in the community. Now, the WDIA Good Review that took place December the 6th, 1957, again, Elvis Presley attended the WDIA Black Fundraising event. Now, let's take a look at this. You see, we see Elvis taking a photograph with blues singer Little Junior Parker and who grew up in Clarksdale, Mississippi. He's also there with Bobby Blue Bland. Now, see, Little Junior Parker was born in 1932, whereas Ike Turner also lived in Clarksdale, Mississippi, and he was born in 1931. They were friends in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Now, in 1953, Little Junior Parker recorded a song called Mystery Train at Sun Record Studio. Now, let's talk about white supremacy and racism. You see, now, in 1989, white filmmaker Jim Jamarsh came to Memphis and he did the movie Mystery Train. Now, in the movie Mystery Train, they're playing Elvis' version of the song. However, you see, in 1953, Little Junior Parker recorded the song. In 1955, Elvis re-recorded Junior Parker's song. Now, at what Elvis recorded this song, but all we hear about is, is Elvis and Mr. Train, and the song was originally recorded by Little Junior Parker. Now, Elvis attended the event, and he's taken a picture. Now, let, in fact, let's do this here. Let's let you hear Little Jimmy Parker's version of the song and let's let you hear Elvis version of the song. Let's take a look at this right now. Well, at long 
Well, that long black train got my baby and gone. Clearly, what you see is Black Memphis history and how WDIA was the cause of the Black Memphis Cultural Revolution until the manifestation of the Black WDIA radio station in Memphis. Black Memphis did not have a daily widespread and cultural mechanism. Blacks knew about Bill Street, however, Major action on Bill Street was mostly limited to the weekends when blacks would unwind and travel from around to let off a little steam. See, WDR Radio created a daily community black cultural manifestation and engagement. You see, via 50,000 watts, WDRA reached a phenomenal 10% of black American households from Memphis to the Missouri Boot Hills to the Gulf Coast. You see, A.C. Muha Williams, whose real name was Andrew Charles Williams Jr., a WDA disc jockey, helped to create the WDA Goodwill Fund in 1954. Over time, the fund provided transportation to school for disabled black children, finance, college scholarships, established boys clubs to cover the cost of regional little league teams and help provide low cost supplemental housing. Instead of a civil rights movement, WDIA created a black Memphis cultural revolution. Let's go back to Saturday, December the 6th, 1957, whereas Elvis Presley attended the 1957 Goodwill Review, whereas the picture of Elvis Presley with Little Junior Parker and Bobby Bland made the front page of the Memphis Press and the newspaper. Now, we can tell by the pictures who was at the show. Now, look at this. Here is a picture of Elvis Presley with singer Brooke Benton, who was at the time 25 years old. See, earlier in 1957, Brooke Benton played himself in the 1957 Adam Freed movie, Mr. Rock and Roll. You see, this documentary is designed to educate, inform, and inspire, and to entertain. See, you did not see Brooke Benton perform on December the 6th, 1956. However, I want to end this story and share with you my favorite Brooke Benton song. This will give you an idea of the WDIA Goodwill Review that was used to raise money for needy black people.
terrain a night in Georgia I believe it's raining all over the world Well I feel like it's raining all over the world How many times I comes out the same It's no matter how you look at it or think of it It's life And you just got to play the game in a boxcar so I take my guitar to pass some time late at night when it's hard to rest I hold your picture to my chest and I feel fine and I feel fine but it's a rainy night in Georgia Seems like it's raining all over the world I feel like it's raining all over the world Oh, have you ever been lonely, people? And you felt that it was raining all, all over this man's world you're talking about the rain and 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 all over the world. Well, I said no, rain and 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 all over the world. Let's talk about the rain and rain and rain and rain. I'm Anthony L. Elmore in downtown Memphis on the mighty Mississippi River bringing you another hot and fiery black Memphis history lesson.